Hi, it's Chris with Implied Music. It's Friday the 13th when I'm recording this. You're probably seeing it Sunday or Monday. Um, and so I'm thinking about 13. It's a compound meter. We don't talk about meter enough, I think. Let's do it. I've done at least one other video about 13. It's a, it's one of the odd meters that I love. In general, compound meters are meters composed of groups of two and three beats. Of course, we could say that four beats in a measure is two groups of two. One, two, three, four. 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 One. Well, there's a first compound meter that we teach our students, which is called 6 8. And that's like 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right? You hear the group of three. And it's always felt as a two feeling, like Well, almost all of the interesting compound meters or the odd meters are some number of groups of two and some number of groups of three. Um, for instance, five is frequently done one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two. Right? Let's think about seven. It could be two, two, three. A great way to do it, but three, two, two is also good. And the clapping rhythm sounds awesome. Like if you go one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, you get an interesting sort of propulsive. Um, feeling there, you know, we hear that rhythm in uh, Eastern European and North African music all the time. And some people feel very natural playing in that rhythm. I think that uh, Western players have to acquire that skill. Well, you get past seven and you get to groups of things like nine, and nine is great because there's a couple of ways to approach it. I want to keep this shorter, so let's get to 13. I think of 13 as 12 plus 1, and we know that 12 can be divided um, a couple of important ways. Four groups of three, one, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four, two, three, or three groups of four. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four. And in fact, you can do both and you get a four against three rhythm, right? And that's one of the way we train that particular polyrhythm for our hands. But 13 is great because it's got that little extra hiccup in it. So if we think of 13, my favorite way of thinking about it is one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. Three, 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 and then two twos. And it's a beautiful sound. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two. One, two. It's hard to cultivate that. You've got to, when you're learning it, count in your head the whole time. Now, counting isn't a bad thing. In fact, I think it gives you a kind of a superpower if you can learn to count and play at the same time. And you have to begin quite simply. Block chords while you count, then gradually begin add extra notes. And of course, if you're composing, it's just a question of like working out the structure and plugging things in. Well. Three, 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 two, two is, of course, one approach, right? But we could also go four, four, three, two. Four, four, three, two is eight 
plus 5. That's 13. So what would that be like? Well, sort of the same chords, but a different vibe. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. The way it kind of compacts at the end is exciting, so... I do like that one too because of the sort of constantly shifting offbeat. If you can get the if you get the tempo fast enough, you begin to feel it feels like one two one two one two one two one two three one two one two one two one two one two one two three one two one two that's an exciting rhythm. And then if it's slow enough, the listener won't really actually feel the difference between 13-8 and 12-8. The 12-8 vibe will begin to sort of settle into the listener, and they'll get a sense of this sort of slightly off-kilter steady pulse. And that's the case for all of the compound meters past 13. Well, compound meters are pervasive. They're found all over the world. And um, probably here in the States and in Europe, the sort of sweep of Western music sort of pushed those um, more complicated and involved compound meters to the side. It does appear in some contemporary classical music. When I say contemporary, I mean sort of post-1900. It hardly seems contemporary now, doesn't it? But for instance, we do, five for, we do find a 5-4 um, ballet variation in um, A Sleeping Beauty. So Tchaikovsky wasn't afraid of using it. And you, you do find it in some Russian music naturally influenced by Eastern Europe, I guess. Um, but it's, it's commonplace now, and any good musician should train themselves in the sort of practice and at least the attention to compound meters. Well, Friday the 13th made me think about 13.8. I hope this has been useful. Like and subscribe and ding the bell. You'll be notified when I do my videos. I'll see you next time.